What's up guys, this is your boy Fix It Daniel, and I got another fix for you today. We got something new that we're gonna add to the channel. Um, something a little different that I've been wanting to try and see how that works. Something a little different from the car. We still haven't left from the car. We're still gonna be doing stuff on the car, but we got something really interesting. We are getting into the bikes, the scooters, all that cool stuff. So I'm gonna show you guys what it's all about. So guys, welcome to the channel. If you guys have not checked up my stuff, please go down and like and subscribe. But today, we're gonna to be talking about the scooter. We got a new scooter that we're going to be um, doing some stuff on. It's actually not mine, it's actually my brother's. Um, he's letting me get it all squared away for him. Um, something that would be kind of cool, something different that I could add to the channel. Just something to show you guys uh, on my little take of how I would do it, what I'm going to do to it. So, let's get oh, into it. Guys, this is a Mal, I don't know if I pronounce it, a Maui X-Pro. It is brand spanking new. It only has two miles on it, and I can show you. See? It's only got two miles on it. It's never been, never been ran. Uh, no, sorry, it's been ran, but it's never been driven. Uh, my brother got it. I think he got it from Amazon, or I'm not sure where he got it from. But he um, has been having some problems getting it started, and it's still brand new. And they, they've gotten it started, but they can't keep it running. So uh, he thought that I could do something with it, help him get it a little bit more performing. So. What we plan on doing is first we're going to get the car, we're going to get the bike started. We're going to get it started, get it running. Uh, we're going to take it off for a little spin if we can get it running and figure it out what the issue is. I think it's just because it's just been um, uh, not set. Uh, I think what happened is, is that it comes from the, comes packaged, put together, boxed up, shipped out. So I think that what it is is just, just needs to be some tweaked in there to get it to actually run perfectly and then you have to make some adjustments um i think my, my dad and my brother tried to tackling it themselves could not seem to get it going and they ended up um they still haven't had a problem keeping it running so i'm gonna try and see if i can take a crack at it and see if i can get this thing running because we do have some performance goodies that is going to go in here for the transmission uh i actually bought a new belt and i bought some lightweight little um weights for it to kind of make it go a little faster but before we put that in there we are going to get this running take it for a spin figure out what the max speed is and then we will commence on uh doing that and then after that if we do get it pretty good and get the stage of this going then we're going to start doing some tweaking to the motor uh of our my brothers always talk about doing a big bore kit right out of the gate so I think we might go with that situation to make it a little bit more faster way more faster and then just do anything else that needs to be done to it but first we're going to definitely get it uh figure out what's wrong with it and so we can get it running so let's get into that and let's get it back inside and then we'll figure it out All right, guys, so we're back inside. Um, I know it's a nice day outside, but we're just going to do it indoors because it's a lot easier. And this is where it's going to sit for the time being until I can take it apart, make my adjustments and everything. There's no point in keep rolling it in and out of the thing just to get it out in the sun. This I actually uh, made some room for this so I could do this. So we're just going to go ahead and start it up for you guys so you can see that it's not starting. So got our key. Ignition, see if I can do this one-handed. See, there's the gas fuel, it says full. So you're supposed to hold on to the brake, give it a give it a little throttle turn, and so 
So it's not starting. And I'll try it again. Pull brake. Give it a little turn. So, yeah, we are definitely having an issue. And there goes the field going down. So I just, uh, I charged the battery. The battery is nice and full. So we got all that. Um, we just have to figure out what's under here. So we're going to take everything off, get to exposed to the motor, and then we can go from there. All right, guys, so we're back. So we're going to open it. There's a key right here. Turn it, and this pops up. This gives you access to the, the cubby area slash engine. So as you see, there is a, um, there's a mini access to the engine which is right here, but we're going to take the whole entire thing off, so we're not worried about accessing that. So we're going to take a 10 millimeter, a 10 millimeter, and then we're going to open the whole entire compartment up. All right, guys, so we're back. Uh, it's been a couple of days. <laughs> I literally had to stop and do most of this off camera just because I couldn't figure out why it wasn't not starting. But I think I'm getting pretty close. And I'm going to explain to you why. So before we wouldn't have it starting, and I think I got pretty close to it because when I start it, it does, hopefully, if it'll start, it'll do this. Okay. Let's see. Let's turn the key and see what happens. It's running. Somewhat. But as soon as I give it some throttle, it dies. Starts right up. Get it running. Not running the greatest. But... Like I said, if I let it... It just dies. So, I'm getting close. <laughs> I'm getting close. And then one of the reasons why I'm getting pretty close is I figured out <clears throat> why. Well, so on these, there's a, there's a spark plug right in here. Um, so, what you want to do is you want to do, there's, there's three things this bike needs. It needs, just like any car or any other vehicle, it needs air, it needs fuel, it needs spark. So, the best way of doing it is to literally go through the whole entire thing, starting with the first one, which simply, which is the spark. So, well, yeah, well, first, make sure you get an air, which is pretty simple. I mean, this is the air box. Um, air box is down there, you get to it on the other side, comes right in here, Goes into the back of the throttle, and you're good. So, so we're good on that. We got air, we got nice ventilation, all that stuff like that. So, um, now we do spark. So, what you normally do, and I already did it already, but I'm just going to explain it. So, what you do is you take this this plug off. You just you just you just uh, pop it off just like that. This is the plug. This is like the coil plug for the spark plug. There's a spark plug. Uh, down in this hole right here my fingers tapping so what you do is you take that you pull it out you put the spark plug and the glow plug out tap it to something ground here or here or something then you start the bike when the bike if you start if you see spark then you got a spark if you don't have spark then it's this little CDI thing that's giving you the the issue um, I've heard that most people said this goes out, but this is a brand new bike, brand new bike, two miles, hasn't even been, 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 been hit the road, um, but it's been sitting for quite a, been sitting for a few months, so um, everything's new, so we were good on that, so I did a check, CDI works, spark plugs getting spark, so we, then we figured fuel, it's probably not getting fuel, well this is probably, this probably is clogged up in, internally. So, you know, naturally, I drain, I drain the gas out of there to see if there's any contaminants or you need something floating around. Everything looked pretty good. So, um, my other thought was, uh, 
something wrong with the carburetor. And we're getting to that. But the, the thing, one of the other things that I ch thought was, um, you know, I was following the fuel line. And then I found this. So this is what is called a peacock. Basically, in a nutshell, it is a, uh, a mechanical fuel regulator. So you have fuel going into here. Fuel coming out, going into your uh, filter, and then going into the carburetor. And then this is vacuum. So basically, it's just a vacuum. You The vacuum sucks on this in, pulls the diaphragm, allows fuel to travel through, going into the filter, and then into the throttle body. So these are known to go out, but this is fine. This is actually works because I actually can, I actually had a gas, a tube, the gas tubes hooked up, and I actually sucked on this. Through the, through the through the hose and it actually opened so this peacock actually works but a lot of people just bypass it because they're they're known to fail if you and they're known to not work if you don't have very good uh vacuum so i did what everybody else did and i went to o'reilly's and got some hose and got this little valve so this is my um so this is a this is some. This is a gas line. This is the gas line coming out. This is a valve. So like old bikes, um, in the in the past used to have a on and off before you started the bike to allow fuel flow. And the or most of the time they had like an an on off and then the reserve. So this is just an on off. And this allows you know, turn it, turn it. <laughs> so when I turn it on like this, this allows fuel to travel when i turn it the other way it just cuts it off right here so this has pretty good fluid in there uh at first it didn't come out too great it had a lot of bubbles in it but i think i got all the bubbles out now it's nice and clean and it goes to um this is the this is a reused air filter uh, oil um gas filter you can take the cartridge out clean it and stick it in there and then it goes into this black line which goes right under into the throttle body so i thought the throttle was actually clogged but as you see, it starts and runs. So I think that we may be good on it not being clogged. It could be clogged, but um, with this with this type of um, carburetor, it's a little tricky because this is came from the manufacturer. So actually, on the bottom, you could service this. Well, you're supposed to be able to service it, but with this particular carburetor, they have the the break off screws on the bottom of the of the bottom of this carburetor to keep you from um, servicing it, and they make you buy it. They make you make you have to buy another one because they the set screws are on there and you can't get them out. Now you could probably drill them out. Um, you may have to do that, but I think we are planning on doing something different for this anyway. So we just may have to wait because um, we're we got something extra for this that we plan on doing. That's going to be coming with something new. But um, we're just trying to get it running. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get it running, get it riding around, make sure everything runs good, see how the performance is before we start doing crazy stuff to it. But, um, yeah, this is this will be the normal culprit. You could take it apart, clean the jets, put it back together, voila. Well, everything's pretty good, um, I think. It's starting to run. I do spray some starter fluid in it, and it does start up. Um, and that, that's good, but it won't stay running. So I can get it running for a little bit, but as soon as I give it some throttle, blip, it dies. So um, there is a uh, air mixture screw, but the problem is, is that it's not like the air mixture screws that you normally would see on the on most bikes. Most of the time, they, they have like a little, um, they have like a little. It's like I don't know if you could see that, but let's see if I can get it a little closer. So actually, let's get the hang on. Let's get this hose out of the way. Move it up and over like that. So, let's see if we can get close to it. So, down below, let's see if I can get an indicator here. So, uh, so right here, right there is where the air fuel mixture is supposed to be. And you're supposed to just pop this little copper or silver mine was actually aluminum cap off and i'll take it out so it'll focus well the problem is is that i don't have a normal like phillips head 
flat a felt um a flathead screwdriver like kind of a nut on the end it's got this weird little half moon dial in there that only turns one way or the other so it's not like the other screws you see on youtube where you can just stick a little flathead screwdriver in there and then turn it in and out this one doesn't do that i don't know why but it doesn't have that which sucks so now i can't adjust the air fill mixture even if i wanted to so um I keep turning it here, turning it there, seeing if that works, but it's it's really not doing too much. Um, so the only last thing I have not done to this whole entire bike is checking to see if the valve timings are good. So we've done everything else. We see if we can get it somewhat running. So let us see if doing the adjustment just adjustments of the valves, valve lashings, will be the trick. A lot of the videos I've seen says that this is the issue, and I'm almost certain that it might be. This may be one of the culprits, a mini culprit, because I can't adjust the fuel mixture. So this might be one of the issues, but I think it'll still start once we get this time lashed. So that's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to spin this around so I can get to the, the crank so I can get this thing at top dead center, and then we will check the lashes. So let's get into it. All right, guys. So we're back. Uh, it's been a couple of days. <laughs> I literally had to stop and do most of this off camera just because I couldn't figure out why it wasn't not starting. But I think I'm getting pretty close. And I'm going to explain to you why. So before we wouldn't have it starting, and I think I got pretty close to it because when I start it, it does hopefully if it'll start, it'll do this. Okay, let's see. Let's turn the key and see what happens. It's running. Somewhat. But as soon as I give it some throttle, it dies. Starts right up. Get it running. Not running the greatest. But, like I said, if I let it... It just dies. So, I'm getting close. <laughs> I'm getting close. And then one of the reasons why I'm getting pretty close is I figured out <clears throat> why. Well, so on these, there's a, there's a spark plug right in here. Um, so what you want to do is you want to do, there's, there's three things this bike needs. It needs just like any car or any other vehicle. It needs air, it needs fuel, it needs spark. So the best way of doing it is to literally go through the whole entire thing, starting with the first one, which simply, which is the spark. So, well, yeah, well, first make sure you get an air, which is pretty simple. I mean, this is the air box, um, air box is down here. You get to it on the other side, comes right in here goes into the back of the throttle and you're good so so we're good on that we got air we got nice ventilation all that stuff like that so um now we do spark so what you normally do and i already did it already but i'm just going to explain it so what you do is you take this this plug off you just just you just uh pop it off just like that this is the plug this is like the coil plug for the spark plug there's a spark plug uh, down in this hole right here, my fingers tapping. So what you do is you take that, you pull it out, you put the spark plug and the glow plug out, tap it to something ground here, or here or something. Then you start the bike. When the bike, if you start, if you see spark, then you got a spark. If you don't have spark, then it's this little CDI thing that's giving you the the issue. Um, I've heard that most people say this goes out, but this is a brand new bike, a brand new bike, two miles, hasn't even been, 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 been hit the road, um, but it's been sitting for quite a, been sitting for a few months, so um, everything's new, so we were good on that, so I did a check, CDI works, spark plugs getting spark, so we, then we figured fuel, it's probably not getting fuel, well this is probably, this probably is clogged up in, internally. So, you know, naturally, I drain I drain the gas out of there to see if there's any contaminants or you need something floating around. Everything looked pretty good. So, um, my other thought was uh, something wrong with the carburetor. And we're getting to that. But the, the thing, one of the other things that I thought was, um, you know, I was following the fuel line. 
and then I found this. So this is what is called a peacock. Basically, in a nutshell, it is a, uh, a mechanical fuel regulator. So you have fuel going into here, fuel coming out, going into your uh, filter, and then going into the carburetor. And then this is vacuum. So basically, it's just a vacuum. You The vacuum sucks on this in, pulls the diaphragm, allows fuel to travel through, going into the filter, and then into the throttle body. So these are known to go out, but this is fine. This is actually works because I actually can, I actually had a gas tube, the gas tubes hooked up and I actually sucked on this through the, through the, through the hose and it actually opened. So this peacock actually works, but a lot of people just bypass it because they're, they're known to fail if you, and they're known to not work if you don't have very good, uh, vacuum. So. I did what everybody else did, and I went to O'Reilly's and got some hose and got this little valve. So this is my um, so this is a this is some this is a gas line. This is the gas line coming out. This is a valve. So like old bikes um, in the, in the past used to have a on and off before you started the bike to allow fuel flow. And the or most of the time they had like an an on off and then the reserve. So this is just an on off, and this allows. You turn it, turn it. <laughs> so when I turn it on like this, this allows fuel to travel. When I turn it the other way, it just cuts it off right here. So this has pretty good fluid in there. Uh, at first it didn't come out too great. It had a lot of bubbles in it, but I think I got all the bubbles out. Now it's nice and clean. And it goes to, um, this is the this is a reused air filter, uh, oil, um, gas filter. You can take the cartridge out, clean it, and stick it in there. And then it goes into this black line, which goes right under into the throttle body. So I thought the throttle was actually clogged, but as you see, it starts and runs. So I think that we may be good on it not being clogged. It could be clogged, but um, with this with this type of um, carburetor it's a little tricky because this is came from the manufacturer so actually on the bottom you could service this well you're supposed to be able to service it but with this particular carburetor they have the the break off screws on the bottom of the of the bottom of this carburetor to keep you from um servicing it and they make you buy it they make make you have to buy another one because they the set screws are on there and you can't get them out now you could probably drill them out um, you may have to do that, but I think we are planning on doing something different for this anyway. So we just may have to wait, um, cause we're, we got something extra for this that we plan on doing. That's going to be coming with something new, but, um, we're just trying to get it running. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get it running, get it riding around, make sure everything runs good. See how the performance is before we start doing crazy stuff to it. But, um, yeah, this is, this will be the normal culprit. You could take it apart, clean the jets, put it back together, voila. Well, everything's pretty good. Um, I think it's starting to run. I do spray some starter fluid in it, and it does start up, um, and that, that's good, but it won't stay running. So I can get it running for a little bit, but as soon as I give it some throttle, blip, it dies. So um, there is a uh, air mixture screw, but the problem is, is that it's not like the air mixture screws that you normally would see on the on uh, most bikes. Most of the time they, they have like a little, um, they have like a little, it's like, I don't know if you could see that, but let's see if I can get a little closer. So actually let's get, hang on, let's get this hose out of the way. Move it up and over like that. So let's see if we can get close to it. So down below, let's see if I can get an indicator here. So, uh, so right here, right there is where the air fuel mixture is supposed to be. And you're supposed to just pop this little copper or silver, mine was actually aluminum, cap off. And I'll take it out so it'll focus. Well, the problem is, is that I don't have a normal, like, Phillips head, flat, uh, fel um, a flathead screwdriver with like kind of a nut on the end. It's got this weird little half moon dial in there that only turns one way or the other. So it's not like the other screws you see on YouTube where you can just stick a little flathead screwdriver in there and then turn it in and out. 
This one doesn't do that. I don't know why, but it doesn't have that, which sucks. So now I can't adjust the air fuel mixture even if I want it to. So um, I keep turning it here, turning it there, seeing if that works, but it's, it's really not doing too much. Um, so the only last thing I have not done to this whole entire bike is checking to see if the valve timings are good. So we've done everything else. We seem we can get it somewhat running. So let us see if doing the adjustment, just adjustments of the valves, valve lashings will be the trick. A lot of the videos I've seen says that this is the issue and I'm almost certain that it might be. This may be one of the culprits, a mini culprit, because I can't adjust the fuel mixture. So this might be one of the issues, but I think it'll still start once we get this time lashed. So that's the next thing we're gonna do. We're gonna spin this around so I can get to the, the crank so I can get this thing at top dead center, and then we will check the lashes. So let's get it. Okay guys, so we're gonna get into doing this valve lashing job. I already started by taking the stator cover off. And it's not that bad, it's just three bolts. Actually, it's more than that. It's actually uh, two little screws and one here and one here. And then the cover comes right off. As you see, it's right here. So, and we have to see if you can see that. I don't know if you can see that or not. But it has to be a top dead center. So it has to match this T. It needs to match up with this line, which it actually does. Um, I don't know if you can see it with the light, but that line is the T, top dead center, and we'll verify it once we get the stator cover off, and then we'll go from there. So let's uh, get up over there, and uh, we'll get positioned, and we'll start taking this off. <clears throat> okay guys, so I'm gonna backtrack. I didn't realize I wasn't recording. I thought I was, but I wasn't. So uh, we're gonna take this valve cover off, and uh, we already taken off this little air hose that was supposed to go here. We move the push it to the side. We took off the air inlet hose and just push it off to the side. So now we have these four bolts. There's four bolts holding the cover on and then get these two bolts out of the way to get the EGR out of the way. Um, so this this part's not connected to the EGR, uh, to the cover. It's connected to the actual um, block of the bike, but this is. So in order to get this off, this whole thing off, I gotta get it off there or get it off here. So we're just gonna get it off here. Um, we're going to be using a 3 8 to get it off. So. Push that to the side. All right, so that's loose. So now, oops. So now we got to change this out. We're gonna use a. Five sixteenths to get these off. So there's another one down here. And then one more right here. And voila, there's the valves. It's got some 
RTB in there for the plate. But uh, yeah, we'll probably will eliminate this. Um, we gotta we gotta get a plug or something to plug that over. Um, there's a lot of tricks to where you can get rid of a lot of these emission valves that doesn't really need to be on there. That's something we may do later down the road, but right now we're just really pretty much just trying to get the darn thing started. So that's pretty much our, our number one goal is to get this thing started. So, so let's get some better light here. Hopefully. All right, so here's the valves, and oh man, this could be the reason why it will not start, and that's really tight. So yeah, that's not supposed to do that, and this is what everybody's talking about, that this is the reason why this isn't, uh, this isn't running, because that lashing is so far off, it's actually working itself loose um, so we are going to fix that and I think this is like super tight down here actually this has some some play um, so we'll we'll take care of that but as you see uh, just letting you know that it is a top dead center because there's a hole here and there's a hole here and as long as that long as that hole there's a hole here that needs to be in the middle there's a hole here that's supposed to be in line with the parallel and um, you could tell if the valves are closed because they're nice and flat. Well, at least uh, at least this one, this one is, but we're at top dead center. So you cannot do this job unless you're at top dead center. And it's really easy just by changing that stator. You just rotate it until you either get to that T or if you want to make sure you can do a double check, get to the T and then make sure that the holes are lined up right at the right at the uh, right, right right here. And then right here, there's a whole other hole supposed to line up parallel. So I think we're good. Uh, yep, we're good. Both the holes are lined up right at the right at the deck. There's two holes. There's two holes on, on either side of the sprocket besides this one in the center. There's supposed to be one in the center, one hole here, one hole here, going parallel with the block. And then obviously top dead center on the stator points. Boom, you're good to go. So let us go and get the tools, the feeler gauges and everything that we need. So that way we can do this proper and get this thing going. All right, guys, we're back. I get, had to get the, uh, the right tool, but we're good now. So as I was saying, we got a 0.3 and a 0.4. This is gonna be for the intake side. This is going to be for the exhaust side. So let's go ahead and start getting into it. So get you guys over here so you can see what I'm doing. So basically the nuts are already loose. So we're just going to twist this thing back. Just going to keep twisting it. And then now we got it under. So now we're going to do now. Just going to just tighten it. You don't want to tighten it until you can't pull it, but you want to just turn it back. You want to have just a little bit of drag. Just a little bit of drag. And then what we'll do, we're just going to tighten down this nut. We're going to tighten down this nut with a 3 8 I think you're normally supposed to use a 9. Actually, yeah. You're supposed to use a 9, but that's okay. We got a little baby. We got a little baby wrench. No big deal. He's gonna tighten it just a little bit. Then we're just gonna check our check our feeler. It's good. Now there's a way of checking it to make sure that you got it right. So we use the three. So if we want to make sure that we got it right, then what we can do is we can go to the next one, which would be a four. So let me grab it real quick. These two things are very very thin. So so let's get the four. All right, so if I stick a four through, it should not go through. 
Okay, so the four goes through, which means it's not tight enough. So what we need to do is we need to go back to the three. We're gonna loosen it up. And we're gonna tighten this down just a little. All right, so we back it off just a hair. All right, so it's got a little bit of drag. We just a little turn. Okay, a little bit back. A little bit back. Yeah, right there. So we're gonna keep the feeler under it. We're gonna tighten this nut down. Just give it a nice firm tight. Okay, that's got a nice good drag. So now we're gonna go find four again. Gotta find the feeler four. All right, here's four. Uh, let's see what we get. Yep, see, I can't, I can't get the four in there. That lets me know that I got it in there nice and good. So now that's set. So now we're gonna go down, we're gonna do this one. So, oh wow, that's tight. All right, we got her loose. All right, and now we're gonna try the feeler for four. All right, so we're gonna Loosen her up just a little bit. All right, so we got that in there. Okay, nice good pull. Nice good drag. All right. So now we're going to take our wrench. Take the four again. Let's get that get this down here. So we're gonna try the four. Should go through. Yep. It's nice and good. It's got a nice good drag on it. Still can fit through, but it's got a little snug. So just with this one, we're gonna go to five. If we go to five, we should be good. We shouldn't have any any issues. It shouldn't shouldn't go through. So as you see. We're gonna grab our number five, number five feeler. Make sure they're not stuck together. It's got a little oil on it. All right, and then we're just gonna stick it through and it should not go through. Okay, so it does go through a little bit. So what we need to do is we need to go back and we need to go back to our four. We'll loosen this nut. Just like so. We're gonna stick our feeler gauge back up under there. All right, so this time. It's kind of a little tricky actually. Um, hang on a second, let me see if I can get around the camera. All right, so. Yeah, let me go around the other side. <laughs> so 
Just gonna stick a rag down in there. It's kind of tight. So, there's my feeler gauge. Just gonna give that Give this a little turn. Let's give it a little bit more tight. real quick all right we're taking it back just a little hair feels pretty good all right so now we're just going to tighten the nut down Feeler. It's got a little bit of pull. Alright guys, so we are all done. We got everything all nice and buttoned up. What do you say we go ahead and give this thing a start and see if this thing will run? What do you say? Let me set the camera up. Let's get my height going on here. Let's give it a go and see what happens. All right, here goes nothing. All right, let's give it some gas. we're still having the carburetor issues well I guess we might as well just check it out um, I think we'll go ahead and stop here and uh, we'll check it out tomorrow all right guys so we're gonna go ahead and stop there I couldn't get it running so I'm gonna I think it's the battery we're gonna try the battery we're gonna charge it and then um, uh, we'll do it in the next episode so there's gonna be a bunch of parts for this video for this video this bike here so we will um we'll end this one here and uh, i'm gonna do another video on us getting it all up and running and getting it going hopefully starting charging the battery will fix the issue and then we can hopefully take this thing for a cruise but guys that's it thank you so much um this is gonna be part this is the end of part one part two will be coming up soon you guys please go down like comment subscribe please hit that like button because that like button helps the algorithm helps me out and I really do appreciate if you guys would like subscribe and please just uh, give me a following um, if you guys have not followed me please follow me on Instagram it is fix Daniel right here and guys just just please show your love and support um, it's a small guy 
trying to do some good um, and I could do some more good if I got some more likes and followers. Um, you guys are liking my stuff with the Cadillac. Hope you guys like this. Give me a shout and comment if you like this too, if it's something cool and different. Um, it's not something I might we mainly be doing, it's just something I'm doing for my brother to help him out. And uh, he thought it would help me with my channel. I thought it was something pretty cool because they are pretty popular if you look online. There's a lot of guys out there that are working on these bad boys and getting them really, really fast. So, um, and since my brother has one, it's kind of cool to kind of play with it. Kind of see what it does and maybe we can see if we can make some power out of it. But, guys, that's it. Thank you so much. Um, sorry about the noise. The washer and dryers are going nuts. But um, you guys have a good and blessed day. And I'll see you on that next fix. Peace.